One of the reasons cruising has turned into a successful industry is due to its seemingly low cost on board. But if it is so cheap, how do cruise lines make money? A ship alone can cost upwards of billions of dollars, but each ship costs different to construct. The Carnival Panorama, a medium-sized vessel, cost 780 million US dollars. Lines don't have to build their own ships though. Disney was able to purchase the Global Dream for 43 million US dollars even though it was reported to have cost 1.8 billion to build, but Disney will have to spend over 1 billion dollars to complete it. Now, assuming the ship is already built and owned, there are operating costs. According to Business Insider, it costs 1 million US dollars per day to run Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. It is important to note that Symphony is a big ship, so to put that into perspective, assuming maximum occupancy, that equates to around $150 a day per passenger, which currently is less than what guests are charged each day on average, so cruise lines already make more money on just the fare alone. Another way cruise lines make money is through overpriced photographs. On Royal Caribbean, it costs $20 for just one picture. You can get bundles which have a lower cost per photo but it is still outrageous at least you get to look at them before buying so you can get as many taken as you want for free and there are loyalty benefits if you are a member of crown and anchor additionally there are family portrait packages which cost hundreds of dollars the third expense on this list is the drink package in most cases you would have to get a ton of beverages in order to break even in value the drink package may include non-alcoholic items as well like specialty coffees and pina coladas, but again, you'd have to be really thirsty. And even without the drink package, there are still individual drinks and food items to buy, adding another source of revenue. Internet is often not included with a fare as well. If the cruise line has an app, they may have a communication feature where you can message your family on the ship, but it is limited in that way. Some cruise lines, such as Virgin Voyages, do have Wi-Fi included for passengers, Additionally, it is free for crew as well on Virgin, which I thought was important to mention. One of the defining features of a cruise vacation is the buffet, but there are many more options to eat from. There are paid restaurants available as well, which are called specialty dining. I have not yet been on a ship that doesn't have specialty dining. Sometimes you can get a specialty entree from the main dining room for free if it is on the menu that night. On many ships, there is a spa. They provide services as well as products. There are different types of massages, manicures, and pedicures, some of which are group sessions. On Royal Caribbean, there is a gym, but it is free. Next up are the paid attractions, like Carnival's Bolt Roller Coaster, Royal Caribbean's Ripcord by iFly, MSC's F1 Simulator, or Norwegian's Go-Kart Track. While there are a lot of complimentary features available, the coolest ones cost money. Many people go on cruises for the places they visit. The cruise lines sell official shore excursions, which make it easier to navigate the area and let passengers experience things not generally open to the public. There are non-ship sponsored excursions, which can get you into non-public areas, but those are risky. A ship will compensate if you run into trouble on a cruise line excursion, but if you are late on an excursion not provided by the cruise line, the ship could leave without you. On this subject, if a port is a private island, you may be allowed to get off the ship for free, but will be without extra privileges. Yes, there are many food spots on ships, but if you want, you can get it sent to your room, usually for a fee. Royal Caribbean has complimentary room service, continental breakfast, and Princess has complimentary room service in general. It may be just me, but the room service on Royal Caribbean tastes different than it does from the buffet or dining room. The laws of gambling can be complicated. What is not complicated is that it is allowed in international waters. Cruise ships often have a casino you can donate or gamble in. You may even get free onboard perks from winning, but to get there, you may have to spend an obscene amount of money, so you're still paying for it anyways. It is not a stretch to say that passengers forget to bring some essential items. Many of these are sold in the onboard shops, such as toothbrushes and deodorant. There are also shops with souvenirs like jewelry, overpriced liquor, hats, 
bathing suits, shirts, shoes, shorts, sunglasses, pants, and some land snacks. Now this is a very interesting one, the art auction. I have never gone to one personally, but I hear that it runs like a normal auction bidding on the pieces of art. They take it very seriously. Not all excursions are land-based. Individual ships can have tours of different areas, such as the kitchen, entertainment, and even the bridge, but it can be pricey. Different from the drink package, the water package gives you a decent amount of bottled water in your cabin, depending on the cruise line. You can still get the water for free, but it will have to be in a cup from the dispenser. In order to capitalize on sales, there are small venues on board that help you book your next cruise with a line right there. Oftentimes, this is inefficient, as if you know how to look, you can get a better deal by yourself. Similar to the casino, the arcade is a place where you can put in money for prizes, though the chances of you getting the value you deposited back are low. On most Royal Caribbean ships I've been on, there's a duck claw machine where, if I remember correctly, you get a few chances to grab a duck with a claw, and usually it is very easy. A lot of these ducks get hidden around the ship for the next person to find and hide themselves, but that is another subject. Lastly, for special occasions, you can get decorations or something special in your stateroom for a fee. Similarly, you can gift someone a voucher for something, like a spa appointment that you paid for yourself, which the cruise line still makes money on. With that being said, these were all the ways I could think of that cruise lines make money. Even with everything included with the cruise fare, the additional expenses really do add up. If I missed anything, you are welcome to comment below. I plan to be much more active on YouTube from now on. Thank you guys for watching, and smooth sailing ahead.